Okay, so good evening. Some are still not here, so today it reminds that we are still in the winter season. And uh, uh, the first hour, just to keep it uh, uh, sad as the weather outside, uh, we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, spend the first hour in talking about uh, the next deliverable that is due by uh, 6th of May, so that would be the end of next week, so in a, in a week time or less, and we'll be discussing uh, together on the next Monday. So you know that Monday the 1st uh, is a holiday, and so we won't have the lab on Monday the 1st. The next lab will be on Monday the 8th, where we will discuss uh, the content of the liberal number 2 that you should try to fill uh, by the end of the week so that we have time to, to check it and, and to see it. And uh, today in the first hour, uh, we will try to have a look together at what kind of information we should put into this uh, second stage uh, of, specifi of specification. Namely, we already knew from the, you know, from the early slides, from the early classes, that this stage uh, is with the requirements. So in the, the period that went uh, from deliverable number one to uh, the present time, uh, you have uh, been working and thinking and refining your idea that was uh, defined and approved uh, before, and you started to think about uh, what the system can do. Okay? So now it's time to formalize it. We uh, understood more or less what could be easy to do, what could be difficult, what are the key components, the key sensors in your system, for example. And so it's time uh, to, to sit down and say, actually, what uh, functions, which functions, so what the system will do, which functions will be implemented, supported, and which ones, uh, well, maybe they were a good idea, but they won't be inside our project, uh, at least in the first uh, iteration. Hmm? Um, the idea is uh, starting to close the exploration phase, starting to close the phase in which you are thinking about uh, the project and uh, starting actually to uh, move towards the, the development of different components. So in parallel, we, we learn different new pieces of technology, so the rest of the interfacing with the uh, smart home devices and so on, the web technologies and so on. And in the second hour, we'll go forward with that. Uh, so that you will have all the, or most of the ingredients that you need to put together in the development phase. Okay, so we are approaching the, the turning point in which we close the design and thinking phase and uh, in parallel the learning phase of learning the technologies that you will need. And then in the second half uh, of the course you'll be uh, mainly, you will spend most of the time uh, in actually developing uh, with the technology we learned uh, the ideas or the specifications that you have uh, at, uh, at this point defined. Mm -hmm. And uh, as, as, usual, as, as always, as with the first step, uh, I uh, prepared a um, checklist here that you find on the website under the exam heading. The, the checklist for deliverable number, sorry, the second one, the second deliverable. So we have the checklist in PDF, we uh, have the checklist in the document format, and uh, that will be the list of information that should appear on the website, uh, on your website by the end of next week. So today we'll have a look uh, at what uh, the information and maybe some practical examples on how to fill or how to provide this kind of information. So this is the checklist that you find on the website. So we go through it uh, together during this hour. And uh, so the checklist for Deliverable 2 says that the project website must contain the following information that is described in this document. And uh, as with the previous deliverable, don't uh, say put a long uh, document into your website. You, you feel free to insert the, the relevant information into your website template. So uh, each group is developing a website with a different organization, different look and feel. So find the section for this information which is more suitable to you. Just understand that uh, 
why the deliverable one was intended mainly to the general public so that anybody could understand what your project is about, here we are starting to be more technical. So probably the information here would be more in a, I don't know, for developer sections or in-depth uh, or features. No? Uh, just imagine when you go to any website concerning a project, an open source project or any device, they always have some uh, promotional pages where they try to explain uh, to a possible customer what the system does and maybe some other more in-depth information uh, that is only to be read or to be understood by people who actually want to understand the, the workings of the system, so how it actually works. So keep this in mind that we are moving towards some more technical information. We don't, we no longer require that what we write should be understandable by everybody, but mostly for the, let's say, technically inclined person that uh, wants to understand better uh, actually what are the functions of the system. Okay, so uh, in this uh, deliverable, the, we start again from the beginning, we start again from the, the goal of the system. So we already have a, a, you know, a narrative description of what the system should do. It's the vision that we gave uh, uh, on the first deliverable. Okay, let's try to trim down to delete all the poetry from the vision and come up with a definition, with a dry definition, that says actually what the system will do. What is the actual goal of the system? So in the vision, we were trying to inspire people to uh, attract the, 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 the interest of people in, in telling a story, which we were saying, about what the user could do with the system. Okay, in Deliverable 1, we were talking about the user. In D D2, we are talking about the system. So we are changing our point of view. And in fact, we are trying to define the boundary, the perimeter, within uh, which the system li lives. Hmm? And uh, actually, what we, we should be clear about what's in the system and what is out. What functions are supported by the system and what function will not be supported by the system. So we should be careful in defining actually what this system does. So try to be specific, try to be precise, and try to be not to open for change. So the system should be able to you know, uh, manage uh, or, or uh, support the user when he's washing their hands, for example. It's an, it's an example outside of any project. And that specific moment in that specific place for that specific user. Hmm? Uh, not in general. Don't, if you are defining a system with a, a generic sentence like, the system should support the user when doing his uh, housework, his chores. It doesn't. Say, it's not precise. So which ones, which works, when, and how does it support? It's not a good definition. Okay, this definition should be something that will allow us to understand whether a given action, a given feature, should be included in the system or not. Of course, we should. We, should, we will be more detailed later, but at least it's very. It's important even for us to make explicit uh, uh, mention of what the system is supposed to do. Mm. So it's a sort of a, where do we cut the boundaries of the system? Say, so, okay, we are only concerned with one part. We had uh, great ideas of a system that could be expanded many, many times in many ways, but for now, we are just defining this. Mm. So this information is similar to what we wrote in the, in the vision, but here it should be more formal, more precise, okay? The intended readers of this D2 will be system designers or other engineers, not necessarily the end users. So we don't need uh, to simplify things uh, for the end users. We still don't need to be specific about the technologies. Hmm? We are still think, uh, mm, talking about the system and the features delivered by the system. We don't yet need, we don't need information about the details in which uh, the components uh, uh, are used by the system for implementing a given functionality. 
Hmm? It can be later. Uh, we, we, we don't want to commit to a specific device or to a specific technology right now. Hmm? We don't need it yet. So we are still, uh, let's say, uh, agnostic to re with respect to the technology. No? We don't uh, mention technologies, but we don't uh, uh, need to talk to the final users, and we can be more precise, more synthetic also. Okay, so did we just a restatement of the goal of the vision of the system in a more uh, dry uh, way, in a more dry uh, sentence. And then it can be useful to have, a, before the actual requirements that come later, uh, to have a section of uh, where we clarify the meaning of the words that we are using later. Uh, it's useful to define a sort of a glossary of terms. In the requirements, uh, we will refer many, many times to the same concepts uh, over and over again. For example, I don't know, the user that is the owner of the system, or there may be another user which is a relative living in the same house, or a user that can be a guest of that house. So maybe these are the type of users that we have in mind. And uh, in the requirements, uh, we should uh, repeat these sentences, the user that happens to be a guest of the house, many times. Mm -hmm. And we want to avoid the text to be too heavy weighted for this repetition of terms. So it's better to define these terms uh, in our way. Okay, let's define user or primary user. Let's define relative or householders, the people are living in the same house, or guests. And we give some one-word definitions to some more complex uh, concepts so that we can define our own special meaning to the terms uh, that for us are important. So the requirement will be more, uh, will be shorter, will be more concise, and we will, uh, will be also less ambiguous. Hmm? Imagine, for example, a term like the interface, the interface of the system. Oh, it could be anything. Uh, it could be the web interface, could be the mobile interface, it could be the USB interface where we are, where we are plugging the sensor, for example. Mm -hmm. So it's a very generic term. It has a million of meanings, of different meanings. But in the glossary, we can define interface to mean the web application used to access, uh, you know, the schedule from a PC or from, from a smartphone. So if we get this definition, then in the rest of the document, we can simply use the term interface and we know what we mean. Okay? So it's important to, to identify the key concepts and give them a definition at the beginning. So you don't have to repeat all the explanation any time. You don't need to, you also don't risk of describing the same thing with different words. That happens. Hmm? So that people will wonder, okay, but are these two sentences equivalent? Do they mean the same functionality or are they meaning something different? Because they are worded differently. So we are trying to be, remember that the, one of the qualities no, of, the, of the good specifications of a good set of requirements is being complete, non-ambiguous, and consistent. So to ensure this sort of uh, consistency and not ambiguity, we should be very clear writing simple sentences, very clear sentences, and not may, non, uh, try to avoid many... Uh, complex sentences or periphrases for expressing a concept of so on. Hmm? So that's uh, a very handy, let's say, trick of defining a set of terms and try to stick to the usage of those terms. That will refer, for example, to the different parts of the system, to the different functions of the system, hmm? and, uh, and we choose a name for them. We redefine some words uh, to mean what we want to mean, what we want them to mean. And in, in particular, uh, an important subset of the concepts that we should define 
are the users of the system. So we call them the actors, uh, which is a software engineering term, for stating the different roles that the users ma could have uh, when interacting with the system. So you may have a system that is intended for different users. You know, some of you are developing projects in, uh, in supermarkets in point of sales, uh, and uh, there will be one type of user who is the customer, another type of user who is uh, the manager of the shop, for example, and so on. So let's define terms also for these people so that we, we, we understand clearly hmm, who are the different uh, people or the different groups of people better that interact with the system. The system doesn't make difference between me and you, between different individual people. They make difference uh, or they customize the experience, the interaction according to uh, the group to which they belong. They offer some functionality to the customers, they offer different functionalities to the managers. Hmm? So what are the groups of people that the system should treat differently? Group one, group two, group three. And each of these groups uh, is called simply an actor. So we will have in our now imagine stage where you have an actor acting the part of a customer. And so the system, uh, we give a name to this actor, for example, customer or uh, manager. And then we describe what the system does with that specific actor. Later in the requirements, uh, we can, for example, write that this functionality is only for managers. That's it. And we already defined what managers are uh, in this uh, definition section. So the definitions is uh, some, some helper section that states some, the meaning of some words, some terms, some concepts, and some actors, some types of users. With these definitions, we can start writing actually the, the requirements. When we were discussing more than one month ago, uh, the, in general, the requirements in the software definition processes, I suggested you to imagine the functional requirements as a long list of, of ballots, of points. This long list, uh, no, I, I use the, Im the image or, or of a list uh, because each of them is somewhat independent from the others. We said we should be able to implement one or to choose not to implement a given functional requirement independently from the others. Of course, having a very long list uh, is, it could be difficult or difficult to read or to understand or to manage if this list uh, doesn't have any structure, any order uh, in its items. So what I'm suggesting here is uh, to try to, un to identify the main functional areas in the system. So remember, functional requirements are the things that the system should do. But this set of things, of functions, of features, huh, are of different types. Huh? And uh, we, it could be beneficial to identify these different areas. For example, in a system, you could have uh, uh, the registration part, a set of features related to the user registration, user login, user profile, and so on. Another set of features related to the um, interaction with generic users, which are not registered in the system, so interaction on the public, public side or public part of the system or uh, interaction on the web interface, or all the notifications that the system will do, will give to the users, or all the acting part uh, on the environment of the system. Hmm? So there may be different functionalities in each of these areas. So for our convenience, we could identify the main areas, functional areas, so different sets of functions that are somewhat related uh, to, for, to the same 
kind of topic and uh, list them. Make a list of the functional areas. So my suggestion is making a list of the different functional areas. For example, here I have one area for user login, registration, logout, another functional area for public web page which pages visible by any users, another functional area for notifications, another for user preferences, and so on. These are not, uh, these are not yet uh, requirements, because this doesn't say how the login is done, how can the user register, and so on, what is the procedure. That will come later. We need a more detail. We, but we know that there is a set of functionalities that are related with login, registration, and logout. There will be probably one, two, three, seven different functionalities, different, different functional requirements that live in this area. And we want to keep it separated from the user preferences. So we want to have a managing the user profile and then setting the preferences for each registered users. So we are grouping here in this generic user preferences all the <coughs> settings that every user could do to modify the behavior of the system. And so on. So we give, uh, we are sort of giving some chapters, titles, chapter titles uh, to our long list of functionality requirements or functional requirements. Uh, so that for helping us uh, tracking them down. So this is just a, a list, a table of contents of what will follow later, of the real uh, functional requirements. For uh, ease of identification, my suggestion is to give a number or a short identifier, short string, to each of the areas. So that we will, we will reuse this identifier or this number later, so that it will be easy to understand from any given functional requirements which is the area that it belongs to. And then we have the actual list uh, of functional requirements divided per functional area. Uh, the idea is uh, for, each, for every, each and every requirement, creating a table, a list, uh, I, I, I'm not talking about the, the, uh, the visual layout. So if you like the table, you can use the table. If you want to represent it in, other, in some other way, you're free to do that. I'm only concerned with the information. So every functional requirement uh, should be identified. My suggestion is to identify them with a notation of two different uh, items one is the area x is the area one of the previous ones and the other is the number inside the area so for example user dot three will be the third functional requirement into the user login or registration and logout uh, functional area so that you may have a long list but each one each list uh, as each item in this list uh, has some recognizable structure the area and uh, the specific number. If you want, you can also use an identifier instead of the number, mm -hmm. but uh, it's up to you. It's important to have a requirement that should be easy to identify, to refer later, so that you can also put some comments in your code. Okay, this implements uh, functional requirements uh, 3.2. And later, of course, the title, the title for this uh, requirement. Short title, one line, that for a, a person that is familiar with the system should be able to let them identify easily uh, what is the, the function that has been described by the system. So, uh, separate a title, a one-line title, from the, an actual description of the functionality. And this is the real requirement. This part, description of the functionality, is the actual behavior that we are requiring out of the system. We are requiring the system to support this spe specific behavior. 
to support the user, to enable the user to uh, interact with the system according to this uh, specific behavior. And one way to write this, this description is trying to write it in a way that will uh, be easy to verify. Try to think uh, about how can I check if I'm given the system here, they gave me a prototype of the system, I want to check whether all the functions are implemented. So the description of the functionality should be something that uh, helps us to understand or to verify whether the functionality is implemented or not, is present or not. One way is, uh, for example, to describe how the user behaves with the system, how the user interacts with the system. For example, for the login or for the registration functionality, we could describe that the user will enter his own, uh, will select his own uh, username, his own uh, password, and will uh, ask the registration. And later the system will send a confirmation email for the registration, something like that. So we describe what happens so that when we are trying to check whether the functionality is implemented, we can just walk through the steps and see, okay, the user can do this, this and that, oh, good. So this means that this functionality is implemented in support. Hmm. This is a suggestion. So actually we have a list of uh, identifiers, titles and descriptions. And it's very important to, while, while developing this description, to think about the priority of this functionality. We already mentioned many times that uh, maybe we can have a list of a uh, hundred different requirements, and we already know that we won't be able to implement all of them. So we should have a way, a, some criteria, to decide uh, which uh, requirements are more important than, than others. And it's, it won't be the ones I like most. Huh? We should be objective <coughs> and say, okay, we have 100 requirements. Some of them have a higher priority than others, so, so they should be implemented sooner. And in particular, the um, the requirement uh, for which we assign a priority, a top priority, priority number one, should be the ones that will be present in the first version of the system. Then when we finish to implement or to support all the priority one requirements, then we can move on to the requirement with, uh, that we tagged with priority two and so on. Okay? So it's a sort of a, an ordering First, this group, uh, the first version will implement this functionality. The second version will, be implement, will also implement the functionalities required by uh, all the functional requirements with priority two and so on. And uh, how, do, how do we select uh, the priority? You know, you will be tempted to set everything as priority one. Everything is important because it's my idea, it's my project. Everything should be there. Okay, so we, you could try to ask yourself two different questions for setting the priority. And the priority will be a combination of the two, of the answer to these two questions. First is uh, how relevant is this functionality to my project? So how this project is specific, is good, the value of the project, the specificity of the project depends on this specific functionality. Okay, so there, in this case, for the relevance point of view, you are trying to grade different functions according to how much value they add to your project. For example, the login functionality brings zero relevance. It's not, 
none of us is uh, creating a project whose main value is that you can log in. Hmm? It doesn't bring any, any specific value. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, a necessity. Necessity is the other point of view, saying, okay, something should be there. Otherwise, the system can't work. If I don't have any login functionality on the system, how can the system be customized for different users if the system has no way of knowing the user? So in this case, the login functionality is a necessary one, as a high necessity, as a very low relevance, because it doesn't add value. If I could avoid it, I would. But I must implement it because otherwise other parts of the system that are more relevant will not be able to work. So we start from the relevant parts, which are the most from the list of the functions. So one idea could be first we list all the functions. And then function by function, we ask ourselves which are the most relevant for the project. And for those that are not relevant enough, or we, we wouldn't care, we try to identify which ones are not relevant, but in a way they are needed, they are necessary, because they are needed to support some other function which is more relevant. And so this priority is a combination of the two. We need to implement first the most relevant, fu relevant function and the most needed necessary functions. So the combination of the two, these two factors that determine the priority. For example, uh, in the example that we had before, the registration, the user registration, is normally not relevant to the project goals and not even necessary. So we could also have a predefined set of three users for our demo. Hmm? We don't need to implement the whole registration process with the validation and so on. We just can enter the usernames uh, in the database by hand. It doesn't decrease the value of the system. Because it's, uh, okay, it's a functionality that is missing. Of course, the registration is one of the functionalities. But it's not necessary because we can fake it in some way and not relevant because it doesn't, its presence will not change, presence or, or not, or absence, will not change the value of the project. Of course, I'm not saying never do it. I'm just saying let's do it after the more relevant and the more needed parts, the more necessary parts have been solved. Try to resist saying, okay, but I'm already there, it's only, it's not a big function to implement, it's not a big functionality, let's do it anyway. No, yes, let's do it anyway later, after the most important ones, uh, most uh, relevant and most uh, needed parts are implemented. So try to, to reason seriously about uh, these this things. And uh, in your description right now, you have uh, probably many ideas. Now you have systems that can do different things system that can react to this kind of sensors, it can uh, analyze this kind of uh, data, can uh, behave in different ways. For example, you have an immediate feedback to the user and then a feedback to the manager, and then I can you know, ask for a call from ex some external service for something. And they are all good ideas. But uh, at this point, we should be able to prioritize them. Always imagine that you will be able probably to implement uh, less than half of the things uh, that you're thinking about right now. So which half would be? The most boring one or the most relevant one? Hmm? So this is just a number. I suggest a number between one and three or one and five if you want to be very precise. But it will be important in the, in the development later. Because later we will split the work in different people and you want to assign the development of different parts to different people in the group according to this priority. 
so we don't we don't want one person that is losing too much time on priority five items while we are still uh, uh, fighting for a good implementation of priority one or two items okay and if you do that at the beginning before starting implementation which it will be much easier to reach a consensus to agree uh, on which is more important and which less when you start to 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 dive into the code and to dive into the implementation will be much more difficult to be objective about the relevance of any specific function to the general to the whole system okay so it's just a small number but it's a very important one and that would be the list in your system you could have uh, 20 40 60 depending on the level of detail in which you want to go into your system my suggestion again is trying to keep it small to focus on the real core functionalities for your system we are building a first prototype so let's not uh, uh, try to bring everything in but uh, to identify those that are actually uh, really relevant and add value to the project so this for the functional requirements for the non-functional requirements you remember that those are uh, those qualities those characteristics of the system that uh, constrain the way in which the functional requirements are implemented so that would be compatibility or portability requirements what kind of user interfaces what kind of user devices are supported they could be performance requirements what are the response times uh, what is the scalability of the system how met how many data can it, can it manage and so on uh, they can be interoperability requirements uh, so what are the external services or the type of sensors that the system should be able to interface with and so on mm. so are all the uh, constraints so you should implement these functions but you should implement them in this way so that no function could be slower than a given threshold the number of users should be at least uh, the number of supported users should be at least uh, 10,000 Pro probably not in our case uh, the system should be able to record the data for the last uh, and, uh, and process the data for the last six months maybe at a uh, five minute resolution and that gives us the size of the, the database the minimum size of the database that we should be able to manage and once we know the size of the database we probably understand whether we can move it around from one machine to the other to from one node to the other and so that will be that will it will influence our choices our implementation choice hmm? so the idea is uh, starting to think about the numbers that limit in some way the size of our problem time space users simultaneous users and all the compatibility issues the user interface will be a web interface, a mobile interface, a mobile website. On which resolutions, on which devices, on which languages. Hmm? And uh, uh, try to list these uh, non-functional requirements. Uh, the idea is to describe them in a very simple way. In this case, we don't have any functional areas. And non-functional requirement, by definition, applies to the whole system, not just to one area. And so we don't have the x dot y notation. We just have a number, non-functional requirements one, non-functional requirement two, three, four, and so on. And for each of them, we give a description. If you want to have a title, also okay. And uh, we could have uh, you, you could identify the area. The of the attributes that we are trying to describe in the system so probably it could be a usability non-functional non requirement could be an efficiency non-functional requirement portability one and so on so some of these areas here 
probably are more useful for our kind of products, for our kind of projects. Mm -hmm. So choose one of these words uh, to help us understand what you mean. So there will be a set of non-functional requirements concerned with uh, efficiency. A set, uh, one or two, non-functional requirements concerned with portability. So all the web interfaces should be supported in Chrome version such and such, uh, or all they should come in HTML5 or something like that. Mm. The number of non-functional requirements that we, we generate is usually not very high, five to ten, more or less, mm. because our projects are, are just prototypes, so they don't need uh, uh, to be to support too many environments or too many users or to be so uh, to have very big performance issues and so on mm -hmm. but at least we should uh, think about those and uh, the suggestions here are that probably portability think about all the compatible devices that you want to support never write all the mobile phones you will not be able to support all the versions of Android and iOS and Windows Phone and whatever. Mm? Be minimal. Support only a, a small set of devices, a small set. Of, we, we don't care, okay? It can always be extended later. But it's better to say at the beginning, we are just supporting my phone mm? and not yours. It's strange, but it, it's a choice. Huh? Instead of uh, stating that we are going to support a lot of devices and then later on you will, we will discover that it will not work on your phone, your friend's one, and so on. Okay? So start small and if possible then expand. It's always possible to do better than this. These are just minimum requirements. Hmm? So try to identify the kind of user interfaces that you want to support. And more or less something about the efficiency. So imagine the size of the data that you, are, that you need to support, how many users, how many data samples, how many, hmm, how, how, how fast the, the system should react. If the system reacts uh, in uh, one second, is that acceptable? Depends. Maybe in some cases, a uh, one second response time is more than acceptable. Because maybe it's a response time for, I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about the people that are um, smelling the fruit rotting, okay? And in that case, a response time of some hours could be more than enough. Uh, re having the information that some fruit is going bad uh, in a few hours. We don't need to, <laughs> to, to detect it in one millisecond. In other cases, for example, if something is interacting with the user, so while the user is crossing a street, some, some lights will react, uh, then you need uh, a, a response time under half a second. Hmm? So uh, de it depends on the type of functionality that you want. Uh, don't uh, put too much, uh, you know, too many constraints or too strong constraints uh, on the functionality if you, if you don't need them. You know, more or less, as a rule of thumb, uh, all interaction with the user should come under 300, 400 milliseconds maximum. Otherwise, people will, would feel disconnected from the system. Okay? Uh, being better than 100 milliseconds is not useful. Remember that uh, 0 0.1 seconds is more or less the time that the, our eye needs uh, to process new images. So if you are faster than one tenth of a second, you don't, people will, will not notice it. Because their, their eye is not fast enough. So between 100 and 300 milliseconds is okay for user interaction, more or less. And all the other functionalities that don't, that don't require direct user interaction could be slower. And depending on, the, so that will tell you that you don't need probably a sensor that will sample uh, some data 20 times a second, but only maybe every couple of minutes. So, and that will also be important for developing uh, 
all the finding the good sensors and developing the architecture because imagine that you have a sensor connected to a, a raspberry that you need to query from the website then you have at least uh, two different uh, data exchanges and every data exchange will cost you at least 50 milliseconds more than that if the data is big hmm? so if you set a very strong uh, maximum delay limit then you are in some way constraining the architecture of the system it will be more difficult to have a distributed architecture or you need more powerful nodes in the and in the more power more powerful peripheral nodes so it's a lot of uh, trade-offs that you will need to do later on and these trade-offs should be designed for meeting these uh, requirements that you are setting up right now so these are actually uh, the contents of the, of the next deliverable, we don't need much more, except for an uh, update uh, of the open issue section. So remember, you, in your website, you already have an open issue section where you, you listed the topics where you don't know the answer for yet, at least. And uh, you already have some of these in D1. And while thinking about the system, probably new problems came out so what we are asking you is to update this section if an old problem has been solved cross it or mark it as solved or resolved i know the solution now of course you need to implement them yet solved doesn't mean implemented it means i know how to implement it now and new ones can also be marked okay in this month we found a new problem that we didn't come up at the beginning so that you have a list of the main points and the main problems, the major issues, and you can, you know, check them one by one. And you remember, there is an interaction. You are the designers. There is an interaction between the open issues and the functional requirements. If you have an open issue a big problem that you don't know how to solve and you discover that the priority of this problem is low is not a top priority is not so relevant then you can forget about that you don't need to solve it you don't need to spend your nights in thinking about how to solve this problem because you can decide not to implement it in the problem in the project so also the analysis of the functional requirements is also a a guide helps us in weighting the importance of the issues. Hmm? On the other hand, if there is a major issue that is concerning one high priority requirement or a high priority functionality, then we should first solve that. That would be uh, our, otherwise it would stop our project. It would, if we solve everything else, Except that issue, the project will not be complete. Hmm? So, in some way, you can, in this week, uh, play with these priorities and with these issues, trying to find a balance. It's okay, it's normal if we have a couple of major issues right now, because we still have months to go, for the, two months, not so many, uh, for the implementation and for solving all these issues. But uh, if you find that you have six or seven, uh, or seven open issues, then probably you won't be able to solve all, to solve all of them. So you have to redefine the priorities of the, uh, and the functionality of the system. Hmm? So try to find a balance where it's convincing to you. Well, okay, I know I can do it. Hmm? Should be your impression when you read the, your document. Um, okay. So, if you want, we can spend uh, 15 minutes trying to fill up uh, one of these uh, deliverables just to, to play it together. Hmm? Uh, as an example of what to do. That's your new document, yes.
So in November, the, the wake up project that I have in my slice example, where is that? Uh, hmm? This one, where we have uh, the wake up system, the intelligent wake up system for our users. Okay? We already mentioned it uh, when we had a look at the process. So, how can we write the functional, require, functional and non functional requirement for this project? Hmm? How would I think uh, if I had to write those? So, first of all, we have the purpose and scope of the project. I'm following the, 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 the checklist. So the system will, so you, you, you notice that in the vision document, we always try to speak about the user. The user will do this, the user will be enabled to, and so on. Right now, we are starting to talk about the system. So we are, we are switching from the user requirement to the system requirement point of view. So the system will manage the wake up, the morning wake up for one user. One. Is the system designed for a family or for a person? For a person living alone or for a person living with adults? What is in or what is out? What functions are in and what are out? Do we need to manage the, the wake up for everybody or just for one user? And what is the context in which this user is living, in which this functionality should be delivered? Okay, probably in our vision document we weren't so specific. We are talking to a user about what, the, what wonders the system could do. Uh, for one user, by customizing the uh, different wake up methods according to the, con to the loc uh, context, location, so where the user is and the schedule, the calendar of the user, the, the context of the, of, according to the user context, the user's context. One user possibly living with others. The system will operate mainly in the user home, but a limited set of, a limited set of functionalities will be available when outside. Available outside, even if the user, even if the user is outside. For example, in a hotel or friends. Uh, customize different wake up methods, phone, music, lights, etc. We are giving some example. So, for example, we are not thinking about uh, throwing uh, cold water into the user's face. That could be a method. It's not contemplated here.
They are not shaking the bed, for example. Uh, it could be another method. Uh, we are trying to, why uh, after reading this description, uh, some people can better understand what, especially what the, what the system doesn't do. Hmm? Okay, to understand it better, we can define the glossary of term and uh, the actors. So the actors are the type of users, groups of users, interacting with the system. And probably we have only two actors in the system. We call the user and the others. Right? User is the main user, owner of the system that should be woken up. System. And the others are people living with the user. in the same house or hosting the user. So I sleep into a friend's house and that would be other people. The system in, in some way should also take into account these other users that maybe have some requirements, for example, being left alone or not being disturbed too much or something like that. Let's see if we need more users later, or if actually the, user, the others really need to interact with the system or not. Hmm? I don't know yet. But at least uh, we have these two big groups. And we call them just user and others. I could call them A and B. We just give a definition. So that later on, when I'm talking about user, I'm always referring to the primary user of the system, and not a another type of user. And uh, I can define, for example, a call, the wake up call, for the user. that may take different forms. Hmm? So the call is the method that I'm using that the system uses to wake up the user. up and we will have some music call ring talk call and so on that will be later we can have uh, some preference uh, for example the preferred time for the daily call according to the week of the day. Oh, sorry, to the day of the week. And so on. Maybe we add them later. We, I probably can think all of them at the beginning. When we, say, when we see that there will be, there will be a concept that we are repeating in our functional requirements, it's better to define it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once we have the terminology, we can start with the functional requirements. And uh, the first point is identifying the functional areas. So it could, it could create a 
a table, for example, or a list, as you prefer, in which I have the different functional areas. So what does the system do? Uh, it enables the user to specify their preference. So, press. Users, the user can specify his or her preferences. We can have a configuration phase where the system is associated to the available devices for the call. For example, do we have a, a hi-fi stereo system that they can use for the call? Do we have the control of the lighting system? Do we have the control of the smartphone ringer tones? Hmm? And each of these should be configured. So, okay, I have access to these, and this should come probably as the first attempt or the second attempt or the third attempt and so on. Hmm? So every system, imagine that you have the system that you are trying to sell to different users, and every user First of all, we'll have to configure the system into their home. You have um, then the call, actually, functional area, where the system delivers the call to the user. How? Well, there are different ways. We will list them separately in different functional requirements. But there are, there are a group of them. It could be, oh, uh, yes, I, I'm thinking about uh, the schedule of the user. So in some place, uh, the user can also, should also be able to specify where is scheduled store, if does it have, I don't know, Google Calendar or something like that. And uh, so that would be in the configuration. And uh, available user information. Then we can have, uh, so we have some preferences about, uh, I'm not writing here preferences about the wake up times, because for me, preference is already a defined word. Preference already means uh, the preferred time for the daily call. Let's put it capital. But maybe there are exceptions. Tomorrow, I need to wake up earlier. Or tomorrow, on the 1st of May, it's a holiday. I don't need uh, to be called. Hmm? So there are a set of functionality for managing exceptions. Rules uh, that deviate from the normal preferences set by the user on a one-off basis for tomorrow. This rule is not to be remembered. It's only to be applied for tomorrow and then disable it. And there are also probably some away functionalities the set of functionalities for the system behavior when the user is not at home
but must be called. Home. The location where the system is installed. And uh, the user normally lives. It could be, I, I'm calling it home. Maybe he's living in a residence or in the college universitario. Hmm? It doesn't matter. I call it home because it's easier. I define it in this way, and the home will also refer to the place where I define that, where the user lives and sleeps. More or less, maybe we can think some more, but I'm trying to understand the, uh, big blocks of functionalities. Okay, let's say there may be more. There may be more. So in every in each of these areas, we have several functions that need to be supported. So, for example, in the preferences area. So let's start defining individual specific functional requirements so i have uh, another table a functional requirement uh, pref dot one with a title description and priority For example, um, set call time, the default call time, for example. Do we all, do we all understand what it means? Probably yes, because we have a lot of shared context. We know what prefs is, we know what uh, call is, and so on. So probably we, we just have a very short title, we already understand what we are doing here. So the user, but we want to explain it better, the user selects a time for the call, to be applied to all, to a, every day of the week. So, every day, from Monday to, tu to Sunday, or from Sunday to Saturday, depending on how you see the week. And the second set uh, the call time or by day of week. So the user selects a time for the call to be applied on a specific day of the week. For example, all Thursdays. This setting overrides the default time and any previous time on the same day.
and also the default we should specify whether if I apply a default uh, it will cancel all the other customizations or not hmm? so this will override will erase actually all other settings in particular ref.2 So this is a, an easy way to reset the system. Okay, let's put a default time and then modify it for some days. I could also imagine, because imagining doesn't cost too much, adding a priority uh, sorry, um, set call uh, set in the call time for uh, holidays in your country so the user selects a country in which he lives And the system will modify the, or will uh, disable the call in the official holidays in the country. For example, it's part of the preferences. I think about this other functionality for discussing the priorities. I think that priority, the first uh, two are mandatory aspects. Priority one and priority one. Priority one is, is in some way necessary, not too relevant. Of course, we must have a way to reset, to define a time. It's not too relevant because every alarm clock 200 years old is able to deliver you a wake up call at every hour and the same hour in every morning so it's nothing specific what is specific about the system is the ability to, to modify the times according to the set of uh, criteria the second point two is more relevant and also necessary because otherwise your system will, will have no value and this one, is it uh, necessary? Well, no. We could imagine a system that works without this functionality. And does it bring uh, additional value? Yes, little, but not too much. Hmm? So, is, oh, sorry, uh, what did they do? Okay. It's not uh, necessary and only slightly relevant so I will give it a four or three as a priority three or four it's not even so easy to implement if you think about it so what are the official holidays in uh, Rwanda is there a database where you can find this information is there any service online or giving you that information and if they change how can you update that so it's something that brings little value is not really needed and it's a lot of it creates a lot of problems so it's better to set it to set it aside and so on 
and you go on like this. So you're starting for, for each area to think about the, di the different functionalities that the system can do. And uh, in the description, I tried, I'm not sure I succeeded every time, to describe a way to test that functionality. Let's play the user and try to select a time for the call to be applied. Okay, I'm the user, I'm doing this functionality and see, okay, is that in the menu, I can, can, I, can I find it? Does it work? Does it, re does it really erase all the other settings? No? Just by playing the description, I'm testing the functionality. So a way of describing a function of the system is uh, describing the user while he is uh, exploiting that functionality. And that will also give us an idea of how the functionality will be implemented and also how the functionality will be tested in a very simple way. Okay? So in your case, uh, start to think about the main areas of your system, functional areas, and inside these functional areas, the different functions. If you have an idea, list it, and if you find out that this idea is not so important, not so relevant, and maybe is a bit difficult, you can leave it there, but give it a, a low priority. If something is necessary or is actually relevant to the project, give it a high priority. Okay? Good. So, we can have a break now, I think. Yes, it's 5.35. And later on, we'll start uh, playing a bit with JavaScript, uh, so we go back on to our web development uh, topics. Hmm? So, let's have a 15-minute break. <laughs>